Hi folks, welcome to Wanderings Wellness. Welcome, welcome back. Lydia and Finn as per usual. And today we have a very special, actually we have 30 very special guests and there are two owners. Um, <laughs> is that 30? So, I thought it was a wild guess. Am I close? <laughs> very close. Yeah. Oh. And these are the beautiful sourdough loaves that are about to be delivered to our shop at the Hopsack tomorrow by Shane and Charlotte from Scale. Mm-hmm. Welcome yeah, dudes. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Daddy, thank you very much for coming on. Um, <laughs> this is, I, like, I think we were, well, I suppose, kind of hunting you down as part of our podcast series, but I think probably the hunt in terms of me getting to you started quite a long time before that. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know we how... We put you off as long as we could. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. yeah. Like, you're so not, patient. Yeah. It wasn't like... Um, patient, quite a It wasn't like on purpose or anything. We just were really kind of overwhelmed yeah. straight out the, yeah. out the gate. Like, it's just a reflection of the thing you're doing now. But yeah, it was and how we set ourselves up and, and like the equipment that we had and just the amount of labour that goes into this type of bread and mm-hmm. pastries that Shannon does. Yeah. It just... Um, just takes so much time and yeah and like physical I, so you you came in yeah. on like a saturday in early june i want to say last year something like that and we're like cool we're ready to go we're launching and you did a tasting day and people were like i had to like wipe up the drill it was a mess it was great. <laughs> and then like next you're like actually i i, I don't know if we'll be able to deliver to you. i was like that is the worst teas <laughs> i've ever had one of the best foods we're ever going to get it was so mean and it took us like was it four months later so then we're like finally like okay we're ready for you yeah. Then it's like well, I stoked them. Yeah. I stoked them. I, I curved them. on them. I stalked them. They brought out all my worst qualities. Pretty. Much. We used to go into the half sack to buy That's ingredients yeah. every week for like um, the bakery, <laughs> um, just purely because in the the bakery where we were, most of the wholesalers couldn't even get down the little laneway into yeah. the farm to deliver for us. So we were buying a huge amount of stuff from Finn, yeah. and like it got to the stage where I was like checking if he was in the shop before going in. <laughs> Just so I didn't have to say no to him again. Conversation. Yeah, but like I'm really glad that he kept kept that. Okay, yeah. 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 That's yeah. All of us are really glad too because then we can buy the stuff. Yeah. That's really nice. I can't remember. I'm trying to remember where I first heard about you. I mean, like it was obviously from down in the market because that's where that's is that where you set up first. That's where yeah. your first pitch was, isn't it? We, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it we was. wiggled our way into the. Dublin Fee. Dublin Fee market. Yeah, we. That was tough. You've no context there at all. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but the thing is, they were they were a little reluctant to to allow another food stall in. Really? So yeah, just like yeah. Ashley nearly said no to this. L- nearly, yes. Yeah. Really? So we, we started start. with a brick and brick stall. Oh. Selling <laughs> with like bread hidden inside a suitcase. Like or? yes, just like literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. had like a suitcase <laughs> full of cutlery, and beside that was like <laughs> the first week, the month. first month that we did it was a few pots of jam. A few, it was and jam and curd, curd and peanut curd butter and and bread and pastries. Different nut butters. Like very small amount. <laughs> I love it. That's and then amazing. and then we yeah. And then the next month it was like we applied for another bread one. And That's amazing. And we just sort of morphed into this. You're like yeah. two weeks back as a pain in the hole. Let's get it done. <laughs> but that was the other thing. We were trying to uh, sell it for Charlotte's dad. Yeah. Okay. So we were planning to like put a bakery in the back of Charlotte's parents' house where okay. they had this big store full of antiques and stuff. Oh, right. And so like we're still we were trying, trying to away at the antiques. Yeah, we were trying to show my dad like, you know, just a few so things every month. <laughs> Weird synthesis for a business, like, yeah. like subversively, like stealth marketing your bread, yeah. like, showing your dad how to like keep a tie to your house. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah or just try and like get that space so we could yeah. set up a bigger trick. workshop okay. and yeah. produce more stuff for the likes of for you, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, okay. And, <laughs> like, and like other wholesale accounts, yeah. and okay. just just to have enough space because, as you can see here, like that's just twenty loaves, but I have another forty-five, fifty on the rack there. Yeah. And without the space, you can't really produce yeah, quality yeah. quantity. Yes, yeah, um, consistency is a big thing. Yeah, for us it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so tell us a little bit. So I, like, I know your early days, you guys met in the Fumby, correct? Am I right in saying that? Or did you know? No, 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 no you that's met not true. Sun, yeah, sorry, you're Colin Brewster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, research Colin fail. Oh, I'm sorry. I knew that. Okay. I promise I knew that. It's <laughs> kind of refreshing, actually, because everybody literally knows our <laughs> it's story. It's like everyone knows that, but we do so tell much. everyone oh, really? at the same <laughs> time, in fairness. Uh, yeah. Um, tell them in a different way. Maybe reverse your roles. I don't know. I was the only one. No, We... We kind of both went back to college. I was doing a course I hated. Shane had done a few different courses, and we decided 
separately because we didn't know each other, but to go back and do culinary arts okay. yeah. for different reasons. Like you kind of always had a drive to to bake. I wanted to work in a job I was passionate about that I was able to use my hands on a daily basis, like in every aspect of the job. But not laying bricks. But not laying bricks, exactly. Mm. Like I'd, I'd grown up in a construction environment. All my uncles and my dad, they're all construction background mm. and I just found myself not loving that life and gravitating towards the kitchen more and more, mm -hmm. either in my aunt's house or my grandmother's house or at home. Um, I really started to get into food when I was making lunches for the family. Oh. Before before we'd head to school, I'd have all the bread lined up and I'd go across with my knife and butter them all in one go and then back Seriously? the other way. With and then, That's impressive. Then like, make lunch for my five siblings. And, uh, <laughs> Did you use a pallet knife for doing that? Exactly, yeah. Like, before I even kind of realised that that was an efficient way to do it, I was doing it that way. Really? But like, it was, it was just a natural thing for me to get up and do that. Yeah. Um, but I, I kind of had that upbringing where I was surrounded by lots of people and lots of food mm. and so the kitchen was always the most exciting place to hang out mm. um, and I learned a lot from my grandparents um, on both sides I suppose um, but mainly my grandmother would have baked a huge amount of bread every day because she has she had like around 17 kids <gasps> Whoa. so like granny scale was busy <laughs> granny done yeah granny granny done. Done, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she um she like their family had a huge carrot farm down in Leash, the Duns, so they also Carrots breed children, that's what they said. Yeah, like, <laughs> they, they needed the lots of I workers, and that. I guess they were just, like, wow, happy yeah. and eating all around them, so... That's amazing. Is that on your dad's or your mum's side? Mum's side. Okay. Mum's yeah. side, yeah. And um, so I would have spent all my, kind of, after-school evenings there. Okay. Sitting next to Granny making pots of stew and bread and dumplings and everything. Right. And were you the singular most interested kid in food uh, like in, of, of your siblings? Um, well, it was kind of, we, myself and my brother were in competition oh. quietly, like we, ah. weren't, we weren't like, oh, he was just really good at making tarts and I was just really good at making like dinners. Okay, so perfect. <laughs> it, was kind of, it kind of worked out really well. Yeah. We does he make tarts still? Yeah, he does, yeah. Oh, good. And bread and... Oh, rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice. Ah, uh, well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> He's into making food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. taken a step back ever since, like, like whenever we go down home, I kind of tend to gravitate towards the kitchen. Oh, and, like, no. They're like, they're like, in the chain. Get through yeah. yeah, yeah, over the course. And it's not <laughs> yeah. like part of it. You're like, no, everyone else cook. It's like if you ever get invited to, to dinner with, like, a hardcore chef or food, you're yeah. kind of like... What, and they say yeah. to bring a dish and you're like, Jesus Christ, what do I do? Like it's it's actually like yeah. paralyzing. It got to that stage like, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the reason we gravitated away from being chefs last night. Yeah, kind yeah. Of like, Slightly, yeah. Couldn't relax. Okay, yeah, Even you're <laughs> always the one doing the cooking. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's mainly around holidays where you're supposed to really re be relaxing. Yeah. So. I suppose it's one of the reasons we became bakers, but not the No, not the main reason. <laughs> not, not the, the main, main reason. reason. <laughs> I, I've thing noticed thing. that ever that. since that we get asked to cook less and less, so it's nice. Oh, that's good. Because yeah. we just bring a heap of bread and that feeds everybody. <laughs> 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 cooking yeah. You're like, butter, bread, you're done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, exactly. okay. So, so you guys met on your first day. Yes, you were getting sidetracked. We. Um, She's good to run set. Good. In in our course, they kind of stuck to like a very traditional <laughs> way of setting the class out. Um, on the first day, they did us all in the alphabet, and Shane was beside me. Mm. Um, and they were teaching us how to do like. This is in cooking class. Like cooking a class. Practical class. Yeah, so the they were telling us how to like chop wow. an onion and yeah, yeah, yeah. Basic, prepare nice like um, basic a mere paw for like a soup yeah. or a stock. And Shane was chatting away, like trying to get to know everyone. Telling um, Charlotte that whole story about the carrots and growing um, up in my granny's. Yeah, while yeah, yeah, yeah. um, chopping a carrot. While chopping a carrot <laughs> and cut his finger uh, um, while cutting the carrot. I, I just like, nicked it a little bit. Like it wasn't big. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was absolutely gas. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Day one, damn it. It's yeah. But every other class we were put beside one another, we you know, just became really, really good friends. Yeah. Um and then one of our lecturers, um, Morcheen, 
um, came up to us in a kitchen class one day and said there's two jobs going in a, in a kitchen in the city centre. They're looking for someone to join the hot food and someone to join pastry and they'll put your names forward. So right. um, we also started working in our first kitchen together. Yeah, and um, I was like and baptismal of fire. What was your first kitchen? Rustic Stone? Rustic Stone. Oh, oh wow. Jesus! Yeah. On George Street. So we had yeah. no experience and we were straight into that like environment of 200 plus covers a night. Whoa. And you were just, you were going in working part-time hours during college week. Yeah. And at the weekends, and it probably came to about 40 hours a week. Yeah. Plus hardcore. Just like with the build up to the weekend, Friday, Saturdays. Yeah. It's kind of what you have to do though in kitchens. You, like, yeah. there's, there's so much about repetition and process. Yeah. That bit has to just get done. Is there any, there's no way to fudge that, is there? I don't really? think so. We learned a huge amount. Yeah. Like uh, and instantly, do you know. Um, I was really lucky, I had a great pastry chef above me. Oh really? Um, two great pastry chefs actually and they taught me a lot. Nice. Yeah. And did you know, did you choose, um, did you, was it just chance that you went to the savoury and you went to the sweet or did you know that you wanted to go sweet? I think, like, I think I always wanted to lean towards being a pastry uh, chef, okay. yeah. I okay. always baked as a kid, we, um, even, even through like primary school and secondary school I was always making uh, crumbles and tarts and brownies and cookies and just constantly baking. I never thought I would be a pastry chef. I never thought I was going to go into culinary arts. So I was like on my CEO. I had done like physiotherapy. I was like, oh right. Really? Do you know like? And, but is that the thing you did a year of physio and then you went No, back? no. My leaving cert did not go how I thought. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Ditto. Um, yeah. I think I think I got like number nine on my my. Oh, my God. <laughs> on my list. Um, so I did a year of science. Oh, my God. Um, science, okay. Yeah. Number nine was science. You obviously didn't do that badly. Uh, I don't know. I just had no, your grand, my number three was a, was an AQA, and that's what I went to get. I had like ridiculous <laughs> expectations of how I was going to do. Um, so completely like flipped, and okay. like long conversations with family was like, what should I do? What should I reapply for? Mm -hmm. And everyone kind of was like, well, you've always loved to cook. You've always loved to bake. Yeah. Why don't you think about um, culinary arts? Wow. So, okay. just, yeah. so that's where you ended up. So yeah. then, so Rustic Stone, both of you are working kind of together, kind of separately, but like that kitchen, you're not getting a chance to chat mid service. Oh, we were right beside each other in terms right of there. sections. Oh, like, I was, handsy. I started, well, <laughs> we were like sharing mise en place and, and snacks and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'd, I'd give Charlotte, like, I was on the side section, mm -hmm. so I was doing lots of salads, lots of kind of snacky bits, mm -hmm. and it was, it was tasty stuff. Um, and I so give you the trim I'd of swap. like one of the like yeah, if I was making a tart with <laughs> and like a squeeze of ice cream or a <laughs> nice. foam or something on top, you know, there's lots of foams and stuff in there. Cool. And uh, it was just like a really steep learning curve yeah. Yeah. in terms of but work we're, environment. Yeah. You know, we were spending a huge amount of time together, yeah. Yeah. like working forty hours in the same kitchen, going to college we full time. time. We became um, really close. Like, yeah. Really yeah. Quickly. I think it was just another. Okay. What time, at what point then did you guys get together? I was like, I'm not sure, like, yeah, I feel the old asking this, and I get really kind of like, ooh. Um, <laughs> I feel a bit like Oprah, but it's kind of true. Um, it was like four or five months into second year okay. of our yeah. degree. Yeah. Four yeah. Years, yeah. Four but I, I kind of, I kind of knew, um, like, in our one of our first. Um, pastry classes where Charlotte <laughs> got me to taste her custard. Go on, was that it? You remember no, the moment? It, yeah. That's brilliant! Oh. I love it! Oh, it's so sweet. Oh, That's amazing. But like, it took me a while to build up the courage. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah can do. Yeah. Good stuff. So then you guys went through um, culinary arts. Yep. And you came out the back of that and you kind of, did you go You kind of, did you go your separate ways in terms of where you went to? to my like after years, or a little bit. Yeah. I think one of the main turning points for me, and I think for Shane as well, was in third year in culinary arts, they have this great program um, where you do an internship every summer. Yeah. And in the third year, they kind of push you to go outside of Ireland to gain more experience. Mm -hmm. So I went um, to London to this amazing restaurant called Petersham Nurseries. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a walled garden and the restaurant at the time had a Michelin star. And um, the dining room is in a glass house and the, the, floor, stop. the floor is dirt and the, the <laughs> waiting staff wear wellies. Oh my God. <laughs> I was just like, I heard about it and I was like, this place doesn't Amazing. sound real, I have to go. Yeah, um, super seasonal menu. And yeah, very seasonal. This whole, they serve all year round? Yep, yeah, this, wow. and this concept of cooking that I hadn't experienced at Dumbo, where in Dublin where you could 
possibly have a different menu day to day, mm. week to week. Mm. You know, they get a phone call from a supplier and they'd be like, we have really great peaches from Italy. Do you, can, you know, can, yeah. do you want them? They're fantastic. Or um, there'd be courgettes in the garden that would just be gross. like just mm. yeah. out of control. The courgette glut is going to be a yearly challenge for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, is for, it is for us at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, we need two plants to have a courgette. <laughs> we have, that's all we have. That's all we have, <laughs> and it's like out of control. Um, yeah, right. Plums is the other one, right? Yeah, yeah. we'll take as many plums, plums as you have. Yeah, yeah. 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 we'll be fighting with plums. <laughs> we, but, that's something we should plant, actually. Yeah, I ended up going to River Cottage while Charlotte was there in London. Yeah. So we were, in terms of separation, we were like opposite sides of the same country. Yeah. Um, but we got to see each other most yeah. most weeks, like every other kind of weekend. And um, it wasn't that far on the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and did you, did you, hours. so you're, you're, you're staging them, right? So you're yeah. like, they're, they're short stints or are they? Um, it three was months. three months. Three months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and I was working on the pastry section yeah. and kind of experiencing this whole kind of like not farm to fork menu but mm. it was just very thought out very interchangeable and you were kind of doing something similar in a different part of the country yeah. on, on an incredible farm yeah. and we came back to Dublin and I kind of felt a little like lost not lost just like why? Why is this so hard to find? Yeah, like why? Because everyone's doing the caterway palace, blah blah blah. Yeah, thing. like what, like you actually enforcing your subject to your own place, not. Yeah, yeah, and like that's the choices you're left with, unfortunately. Mm. But it only takes a couple of, you know, like many people to get together and kind of try exactly. to change that status. Mm. Yeah. Um, for, but like, it was so the food quality was so good because everything was so fresh. You know, I, I saw things in River Cottage coming in that were picked that morning, they were washed, they were put on the plate that evening and they were going out to the customer barely. You don't have to do anything to it, like yeah. a bit of salt, yeah. any of the veg were just being warmed up gently, like they, they were so fresh, they were cooking so fast and yeah. um, it was just like delicious, you didn't need yeah. to do anything to it. Like, Can you can you remember like the favourite thing that you put out of that kitchen, that you produced in that kitchen, what was it? Oh, I have loads of great memories of like... Oh, that was the best day ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't really pick one. <laughs> detail, okay. There was like this side of beef. It was like 80 kilos, and the at the time Steve Lamb was there, and the head chef Gelf was like saving it for this special thing that he wanted to do, okay. and uh -oh. and like I think um, um, I think uh, like Steve. Lamb just kind of saw how enthusiastic I was about it. Okay. He's like, "Come on, grab that, grab that side of beef, and uh, we'll break it down into the individual cuts, and we'll have a taste of it." And so I got like really excited. <laughs> Ran out to the. They had like this trailer fridge where it was hanging, yeah. and grabbed it, put it up on my shoulder, and ran in with it. And he's like, "What are you doing, you mad lad? Get someone to help you with that." <laughs> and I just like <laughs> flipped it down onto the top board, and we just started breaking it down there and then wow. into the individual cuts. And I'd never seen any other restaurant doing that before. Yeah. And I'd worked in like Thornton's for a month and, and other mm -hmm. places like yeah. Um, but nobody with that kind of uh, quality yeah. of of food. But um, and it's, it's not necessarily that they're producing something with higher ideals, like from a culinary point of view. It's the, you're, I, not I from like a. Yeah. Um, like a gastronomic yeah, point yeah, of view, but yeah. like definitely from a this is food mm -hmm. point of view, yeah. point of view, like for for the people, yeah, 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 yeah. and produced by people, um, kind of making it accessible to everyone, and almost yeah, like it was quite expensive there, and that's what they needed to sustain that. But yeah. I think the main thing they get back with was that it wasn't just a restaurant; it was like a function named cook school as well. Yeah. And so they would put on all these courses, and that's the first time I ever participated in like a, a, a sourdough workshop. Oh right! And oh, they had oh. they had like other workshops as well. I and like part of my work experience there was that I could attend anyone I wanted to, oh my God. and just be like that person's helper for the day. Yeah. But also help teach as well, and okay, right. like that kind of started it off for me, where I got to see bread being made on a daily basis as okay. well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And like they had their own sour culture, they kept it alive, and it was kind of like a nice kind of um, dipping my toe into it. And <laughs> yeah, kind of, it just inspired me then to, to kind of like follow what I was truly passionate about. Okay. 
like I remember on, on our first couple of weeks in Rustic Stone, the head chef brought us down to meet Dylan, and yeah. he was like one of the first questions, like, well, where where do you see yourself going with this? Like, yeah. And um, at the time, I was I was like enjoying working there, and I said, I'm I'm really enjoying being a chef for now, but like I want to be a baker. That's that's where I see myself going. Okay, so you saw that really early on. Really early on, and then he was like, great, yeah. We used to make all of our own bread, but it's no longer possible and feasible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I know this great guy Rossa. He, he makes all the bread. We should uh, put you in touch. Yeah, yeah. Because Rossa supplied them. He, he yeah. developed their first kind of bun thing. Didn't yeah, yeah, for yeah, their for, for their burgers. Yeah. And that was like one of my first jobs on my first day. Is like Cut the burgers. cutting the burgers and toasting them for the burgers. Oh right, for, right. for, for the section. Yes. And. Uh, <laughs> I was like, geez, you could save yourself a whole heap of money if you just got a toaster. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was burning so many bones, I guess. Okay. Oh, oh geez, I've become a chef, burn, burn toast. <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. I love it. First day mistakes. So, yeah. Charlotte, what, like, in terms of what you experienced uh, in the garden, what's it called? Petersham Nursery. Petersham Nursery. Yes. Um, what did you... I was wondering what he was looking to run away and do. Something urgent, obviously. Um, so... Uh, what particular things did you take from there? Was there any really like key thing that you produced that you like got really got you all fizzing about it or was there It was just the simplicity of it. Yeah, like okay. one of the desserts that I remember the most and loved the most was like um just simple panna cotta with blueberries macerated in um a very simple syrup. Um and a viola on top. And I was like, oh, that's so pretty it's so simple yeah. and it was just like yeah. um, so yeah, just nice. so simple. Another dessert was alpine strawberries with balsamic vinegar, and yeah, it was yeah. just put in a bowl um, and, and served to the customer. And I, like yeah. anything I'd experienced back here, just not that it was overly complicated, it was just a lot of different processes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it wasn't just elevating the ingredients, it was yeah. kind of like kind of fudging by, by putting lots of different yeah. things in over yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, was, it was more like pairing it back, yeah. kind of using the highest quality ingredients. Um, that you could. Um, you know, sorry, yeah, I was, I was definitely getting concerned because it's so shame. <laughs> and I was like about to drop one of our loaves onto my lap. I was like, I'll just keep my hands here. <laughs> um, work. You no, should have let it go for like the camera. Just to see how it would because go. Yeah, he's like, he was going to stretch too. If I want to get my nice flowery trousers. Thank you, Shane. That happens. <laughs> you did promise. Slack is a great promise. Yes, it is. Um, it? Yes, it was. <laughs> if, if the sourdough and, and the gluten structure has developed properly like through the mix and shame giving it its folds yeah. and if it ever does slide off the table it should in theory be able to like to hold, its, hold, that hold, its, yeah. hold itself and touch the floor. That's, oh, that's, really? the, that's the, the kind of a test. Like yeah like it should uh, not a test it's, it's not, not something we do it. every day yeah. but like <laughs> in theory in theory it should. Does, yeah. Yeah. It's impressive isn't it like it really is impressive it's like, it's like spider's web like when you get into it like the strength within it and the fact that you can kind of break it and reattach it, and it seems to like up until a certain point. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to overstretch it and snap it because it is, it is more difficult for it to reform the bonds. But okay. Um, yeah, like certain things do affect it, and certain ways of mixing can elongate those strands as well. Okay. So, so there's loads to it, and gluten is like, like you said, it's amazing um, protein. Yeah. It's a, Two different proteins in, in flour in like wheat flour. Okay. And yeah. So so when you're saying particular things to mix it, sorry, this is a total sidetrack, but it's interesting. Um, so tricks to mixing it that allow it to to stay kind of integrated, or allow it to allow it to stay. To allow it to form stronger yeah. bonds. Basically, yeah. it's like if you look at it under a microscope, it does interlock like that. Okay. It's like it's hugging it, each other. Yeah. And they form really strong bonds. If you have an adequate amount of water that allows the, the flour to be fully hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, if you allow the enzymes present in the flour to go to work and start to digest yeah. those proteins, yeah. they form stronger and longer bonds okay. um, through a process known as autolyse. Yes. And so that's, that's kind of accelerated by holding back the salt for the first 20 to 40 minutes. Holding back though, sorry? The salt. Okay, okay, right. So okay. you mix. The salt slows down, it down. Okay. It slows the absorption of water into the flour. And yes, of course. It slows right. down that process. That's amazing, okay. And do you, you want longer and stronger bones because it makes the bread what? It makes it more open textured, more bubbly, more kind of um, 
in terms of gluten, it makes it more extensible, so more stretchy. Mm. It doesn't resist that stretch so much, but it's still quite stretchy. Like you can, yeah. you can stretch it quite a bit. And what's amazing is like these loaves still know that they're loaves. They don't look like loaves anymore, but they all know that they're like where they belong yeah. in terms of individual bits. Yeah. That's amazing. It looks like a honeycomb. It does. Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's gorgeous. The structure is really lovely. Um, that's yeah. their rest period between shaping and mm. like scaling. Yes. So okay. it's. They get a light pre-shape into round balls, and then they bench rest, sit on the bench and rest okay. um, for about 40 minutes, 30, 30, 40 minutes. Great. Well, I shouldn't be letting them rest that long. No, I know you should be letting you go. Sorry. Um, so, so but, sorry, on. can I, um, yeah. I was talking with Katie, Katie Sanderson, yeah. um, who we interviewed recently, and we were talking about sourdough and how sometimes when you see sourdough, it has like the big open holes in it, and sometimes mm. it doesn't. And she was saying it's kind of like um, it's like a trademark, it's a stylistic guess, like a style or, thing it, yeah. um, for the bakers. Par partially stylistic and partially that's like a well-made piece of bread, um, but it depends on your ideals as well, I suppose, and what you want your bread to be like. But because you get these dense Germanic sourdoughs, yeah. which have yeah. no very different. At all. and that's yeah, that's that's breaks. kind of like an a uh, kind of indicator that the hydration is quite low, okay. because that's that kind of dough is a little bit easier to work with. Okay. Uh, so in terms of skill level of, of like bakers and stuff, okay. it, it allows you to be faster and it allows you to just, you don't need to train your You just threw bakers. shade on like all those bakers who do like the, like, the small holes or the no holes. That was good. That's like a style <laughs> of bread as well. Really obvious. <laughs> but it could be, the, it could be the, the quantity of whole grain in your bread. Okay. Because the physical properties of whole grain will actually tear the gluten and stop them from forming those bonds, which allow it to have those big bubbles. Gotcha. Okay. So essentially, like I recently read this um, real sciencey bread book and essentially inside your loaf of bread there might be a cell structure where you have all those big pockets mm -hmm. but when you're baking the bread it's all one whole just with that cell structure okay. so when it's expanding inside the oven it, it this, this the crust forms this like outer shell and that's everything inside just kind of expands into that space oh, okay. and they sense. all during the baking process they all burst and become one big hole so there's there's not loads of little holes there's actually one big hole inside the bread that's like there's subatomic <laughs> yeah. quantum version of it's bread it's really insane, it's it. really like beautiful when you look at it and you slice it open and you fold the bread it's just like visually very beautiful Isn't because it? it's like a, you know the warshank test it's like yeah. loads of it's it's you know, what like does this those. Mean to yeah, you? you know that. Oh, that thing. Where they, oh, yeah. So, like, here's a yeah. bat or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. And it's just okay. like you have this beautiful mirror gotcha. image of all the holes. To, and people love that. It's very like Instagrammable. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it is a good indicator of of like everything. How mm. you shaped your bread, how you fermented it, the amount of like water inside your dough. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good indicator of of like the baking process as okay. well yeah, yeah. Um, you can see a lot just by cutting it open and looking at it is it not yeah. also the story. what you baked it in how you baked it yeah it's it's if you steamed it adequately or not okay yeah if you um, you know if your oven was hot enough or not okay if, yeah, yeah, yeah if it stayed hot enough during the first section of the bake yeah cool. loads, loads of things it's like it's the book. You open up the book and you read. Yeah. You read the bread. Wow, yeah, bread. cool! Oh, yeah. I'd love to get you like. I'd love to give you like ten different breads and just <laughs> yeah. see like who's is this trademark yeah. baby. Yeah, and then you can see like if it's overproofed, overfermented, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if there's a pocket or if it if it's like underproofed as well. You can mm -hmm. see that. Um, so like things you want to really look out for are if it's waxy or shiny. Mm -hmm. So On if it's inside. shiny, yeah. So if it's if it's glistening kind of similar to sushi rice yeah, where yeah, you have yeah, that yeah. gelatinous lovely shininess to it mm -hmm. that's an indicator that's been hydrated properly and okay. what happens when you hydrate a dough properly is that it can bake properly inside the oven mm. and all those starches they gelatinize fully and and your body can then break that down really easily yeah this is one of the really interesting parts because digestibility obviously we have a health food store and albeit we're like quite indulgent when it comes to like food Ish. I mean, relative to standard, maybe not. We live inside a bubble when it comes to that. But it's a big factor when people are buying bread, how digestible it is. And genuinely, we have like a lot of people. Was it you referencing your? Well, you 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 don't really process gluten that well. Your your son doesn't process gluten that well. 
but this sort of bread is something you can actually tolerate. And not yeah. just tolerate, it was like the best bread in the world. Yeah, it's so like you a double can enjoy whammy. it. And so yeah. it means that like if you're giving yourself if you're someone like me who can't eat a lot of gluten, yeah. you kind of save up your gluten. It's like a treat, so you save it up for the <laughs> special occasions. <laughs> and then like when you get to eat something like this, it's mm-hmm. like a double whammy of goodness because yeah. it's your special treat that's like ridiculously delicious, but you're also not crippled yeah. eating it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's an indication of all those stuff that you're saying. That yeah. And it's partially due to the fermentation as well. So inside your sourdough culture, you have a balance of yeast and bacteria. And so the bacteria are producing all these byproducts that break down the gluten so much so that you can digest it a lot Mm. easier as well. Um, So there's all that to play too. And then the kind of proportion of whole grain in there is really good food, like a prebiotic for your gut bacteria as well. Mm-hmm. So there's there's loads to it. What is your percentage whole grain versus um, for my country dough? Yeah. Um. So about twenty percent whole grain flour. Okay. 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 And it's a mix of rye and, and whole wheat. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so. And is rye there just for that slight bitterness or slight, is there like slight yeah. sourness? Yeah. And there's a, um, a more mealiness to the rye that we're using at the minute, so it's okay. a textural thing as well. Nice. Mm-hmm. Where um yeah. have you? I, I think in fact you have. You experimented with some interesting flowers as well. I remember I got a flower from Loads you. Loads of the, different. Um, in the beginning, yeah. Yeah. I was going a bit mad. like. There's some insane ones. What yeah. was the one that that guy brought over that he'd like come from like a, a wheat, that had, an ancient wheat, but it was like from the... Was oh, Finn. France or in uh, Finton Keenan. That, was that it? He's grown so, like a whole heap of varieties of, of ancient grains and yeah. he's collected, I think, over 180 different varieties. Um, maybe not so much, but uh, all these seeds that were in seed banks throughout um, throughout the world, like, mm-hmm. and he he went around and collected them, and is slowly trying to build up the numbers in in such a way that he can test the grain, save some grain mm-hmm. for the following years, mm-hmm. um, planting, sowing, and then eventually build it up to a point where he can start selling it commercially as flour, that's amazing, or as grain. Um, that's a, that's a serious dedication. Serious, yeah. serious um, project. Like, so he he's it? based outside of Copenhagen, but his brother. Turlock is based in Ireland in oh. in Monaghan. Monaghan, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, they have a family plot, they have a family farm, and that's small where enough he's testing the ability for it to grow in Ireland. Wow. Yeah. In Irish wow. climate. In so Irish climate and and is, it, is it a wheat hybrid he's looking at? He's, or is he he's, yeah. he's, he's sort of, um, he's pulled kind of four main ones that work really well in Ireland, and okay. through his research he's discovered that these were actually, two of them were actually the first kind of commercially viable wheat grown here in Ireland before really yeah like ages ago before all the kind of modern wheats came in okay no um, that were kind of more akin to animal fodder okay so we were oh, growing right. good wheat here with successful with quantities with decent levels of gluten yeah, that sort of stuff? yeah. what sort of percentages of gluten are so he? he's actually finding that the gluten is really high the yields are slightly lower okay oh. um, so the, the gluten is actually quite high it's, it's up there with like a strong white flour really so like that's amazing potentially you could make a hundred percent of, of his Ulan's wheat which is one yeah. one that he's really focused on that was my taste and then year. he has red setting yeah. Um, it's got a purple, purple barley or purple wheat as well. Okay. Wow. And then there's another one that's um, kind of jumped out of my head, but yeah, he's he's it's really amazing. like passionate guy, and he's a bit of a he's a bit of a kind of the Willy Wonka of the <laughs> bread, the, the flour world. Yeah. He's he's like a mad um, kind of inventor. He's invented all these different processes and machines to do all these different things. So wow. he's applying different milling techniques to each individual grain and all that sort of stuff. So. Wow. He's um he's kind of on to the right track and it everybody's like, like really all the uh, the the baker community is like egging him on I'm and sure and yeah. really supporting and getting behind him. That's so super exciting because it's like another it whole is. world yeah. you can dive into. That. Is that, I mean, just like you, where you, you did you both stash in Tartina or were you just there or who was there? I yeah I did two days in oh, yeah. with, um the pastry side. Okay, because um, they they're Shane, like Shane did the bread team for two days. Yeah. Oh right. Because yeah. they talk about like makers as opposed to chefs, right? And that's mm-hmm. one of those things that happens there. I'm trying to get there at some stage. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that that must have been an education as well, a little bit like what we're talking about, where you know what you're. This isn't the starting product, and for you, it's like there's a thought about where the grain is coming from. Mm-hmm. Yes. That origin is really where the baking begins, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and we eventually want to get there where it's we're only using that flour. Amazing. Yeah. Um. And really telling that story, like that's the most important story yeah. for us anyway. It's it's yeah. like um, 
it's not only just the flavor of the thing though it's it's like it's so local mm. yeah you know like where we're getting our flour from now is kind of shameful to say that some of the grains coming from canada and somewhere mm. like there's huge miles on it shameful yeah. to say i'm involved in that process <laughs> <laughs> but like that's that's what the mm. system has led to yeah. at the minute yeah. and people like finton are trying to make change yeah. for all the better yeah absolutely um and yeah, once he like gets fully up and running in Ireland, we mm. should be like on track. It seems like different. everyone that we've been interviewing around food in Ireland recently, it's all about, it's all coming back to connection to the land, isn't mm. it? And it's so nice to see that movement that people are really coming back to going, mm. they're still creating really exciting food. It's not that the food's got really worthy and kind mm. of boring. Yeah. It's still really, really high level exciting food, but they're all going, okay, we need it to be seasonal. We need it to be local. We mm. want it to be ethically produced. We want to think about sustainability. We want to think about mm -hmm. our land. Like this is yeah. Ireland. What are we producing here that reflects our story? Like what's yeah, coming from absolutely. us, what's in us as people, and what's coming from our land? Mm -hmm. And what are we putting on the table that works for our bodies? Yeah. Because it's it's local. It's native to and, us. And this crazy quantum science guy I was reading recently who talks about uh, when you like the whatever latitude you grow, yeah. you got, there's like a vibrational like you can measure the frequency that that the um, what you call it, the, not the cytoplasm, the mitochondria are vibrating it. And it, it has an equation that works with our body at that latitude. And so when you start to take foods from different latitudes, like, from, like closer to, say, the equator, people who aren't from there, there's a totally different, um, like, so it, it basically talks about food as being electrical energy as opposed to being just nutrients, vitamin A, blah, blah, blah. And that's what it comes down to, that, elect, uh, you know, our, 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 our capacity is as electrical beings to reduce and oxidize. and he talks about that the idea that if we're, if we're taking you know a burger that's got food from 30 different origins maybe mm -hmm. or maybe more it's a, a, and, and our body's just confused by that from an electrical capacity it makes so much sense and it, like i know i'm silly about this already so when i get like food that i there's a little bit of story about i get like hairs in the back of my neck but i do believe that there's a certain amount that you can give to somebody totally blind that's going to give them and you know this guy's it's science he's not talking totally wacky like it's, yeah. it sounds like voodoo but it's real yeah. but um I, I think there's a lot in that. I, I think, think so, yeah. yeah. And your body tells you that. Exactly. Mm, yeah. If you're, yeah, if if you're like your like tasting, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You you taste something, and your body instantly says, "Yes, give me more of that." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like yeah. any sort of fresh veg we get from like yourself or yeah. um, Jenny McNally. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. always like even from our garden. <laughs> it's so easy yeah. to do yeah. stuff with it because yeah. it just it's so good already, yeah. isn't it? And your body wants more of it. And, and it you do less with it, like it instinctively, yeah. don't yes. you? Kind of like yeah. You just you want to honor that thing like yeah. and yeah. make that the, yeah. the central part of the yeah. thing without having to make a million sauces. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. I feel like we haven't talked about pastry. No, I know. I, <laughs> I, know. Like I just want to talk yeah. about pastry yeah. a little bit. Sorry, you're really busy as so well. You so need to get these guys moving, don't you? I do, yeah, but I can <laughs> no, you, you can start. You can start. Can we? You don't mind? No, no. Totally. No. We'll you give you a little bit of a mic over that side of the room. You can holler across the table. Will it follow me now? That one will, but that one will, yeah. Maybe if we switch on, oh no, we won't actually know, it's, it's battery a bit dead, so uh, that's a bit small. <laughs> yeah, it'll do, right? Okay. <laughs> Leave it on the scales. I hope you don't mind if it gets dusty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> be good. Okay, you can see this. Cool. Um, so, yeah. yeah, let's just talk about pastries. Should we like call you and talk about yeah. you, exactly. <laughs> Talk about the pastries. From Your cruffins specific. Like they are cracking. Hey. Like yeah. literally like crack. Mm. I think with the cruffins, it's because they change every week, and I very rarely repeat twice. repeat flavors. So Can you tell people what a cruffin is in case they don't? How would you describe it? It's like a hybrid croissant muffin. So it's croissant dough that. It's something we, we saw in California when we lived there, and I thought it was really interesting to take something that was a traditional product and kind of interpret, like, manip very unhappy <laughs> not like manipulate it, but just like, bring it on a bit. Just yeah. bring it on a bit, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's croissant dough that we bake in a really deep muffin tray, okay. um, and when it cools, I hollow out the center, and each week they get like, lovely fillings. So it could be jam and custards or um, compotes. Different flavour combinations that myself and Shane love. So why um, are you doing this weekend? So we, one of the cruffins we're doing is um, we got lovely apples from a regular customer of ours. Who, she has so many. She, 
she doesn't know what to do with them. Aye. Um, so I'm going to do um, a burnt apple puree and hazelnut praline custard. Oh, oh um, stop. <laughs> so I think it's. I think that's why people kind of enjoy coming back to them because they're like, oh, what flavors are you going to have this week? Yeah. Um, and it kind of stemmed from us starting out at Elmhurst. And yeah. they had um, last summer a bounty of loads of different berries and kind of just stemmed from that. Um, and wanting it to kind of interchange and be fun and enjoyable. Because yeah, yeah. um, I had always like as a pastry chef kept a little notebook or like a list in my phone if yeah. we went for a meal and there was a dessert I really loved so I was like oh that flavour combination Bing, really yeah. really worked and I'd like write it down or it's take like disappear from your head as well I'd it? take like mental note of it and yeah, I've just always always done it um, and there was a lot of different things in California where, where I was working in San Francisco they just it seemed like when I first started working there I was like these flavours just seem a bit bonkers but they just it was just give amazing. Us some, give us something fun and bonkers to try. Like coffee, coconut, and yuzu was the, like this. Yuzu, really? Nice. Yeah, and I was like, I just would never think of putting citrus with coffee. Oh, yeah. at all. Um, and yet it's got citrusy notes. And when yeah. It went thick yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I just absolutely loved it. I just thought it was delicious. Or like pairing teas like um, Earl Grey and chocolate and raspberry. I would never think of using tea in in baking or in pastry so nice. um, that's yeah, something that's like a big yeah it's, yeah. A, it's a bit of a bugbear for you as well right? well, well, <laughs> this well. is so funny <laughs> <laughs> I can't why you sorry you but I love it I love it right so here's my problem when we go to, when you go to like any <laughs> cafe or restaurant or whatever and then you ask for herbal teas which like you suppose that you can't have caffeine they just go like what's your what's your herbal tea list and invariably it's like Earl Grey. Well, you know, <laughs> raspberry and Earl Grey. And I'm like, I just sit there just trying to seeds. swallow it. She actually like, seeds. I'm like, Earl Grey. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a black tea. <laughs> yeah. like, it's just got some bergamot in it. How come that's on the herbal tea? I know, I know. <laughs> so much. It was, it was so predictable. Was there, cause I, I, I mean, I'd noticed it, but I don't think it ever been quite so wound up. But so the first place you went to, she like probably be like, yeah, that is bullshit, isn't it? And then every place you went up was like, what's a herbal tea list? And I was just like, just wait. Like, it was like, wait. Like, judging people. Yeah. Whether they put Earl Grey on their home tulips yeah. or not. Just the <laughs> it is delicious though, and people do use it a lot in baking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, I hadn't. I had okay. personally, so I was like fascinated by that. Nice. Um, and kind of have taken that inspiration and put it into the cuffins, or we've yeah. started recently this summer. Is it one? Maybe this summer? Or Which one? Doing the Danishes. So we've started doing seasonal Danishes as well. Mm, that's pretty um, I think maybe it was spring, just because we have more space here that we and we've now established a weekly market stall. So yeah. people just were we trialed them one week and people were like really into it and like really liked the idea. So okay. we just expanded our market menu and it's an also another way for myself and Shane to like play around and do do what we can with what's in season. That's um, right. Yeah, that's what's yeah. Because yeah. this obviously the bread has to be a bit more like. Right, yeah. you can't mess with what's going on. Yeah. yeah, so that's great. Um, that's great. Nice. Like we were this week, we're doing um, toasted almond frangipan and black blackberry. Blackberry is really nice at the moment, but we'll probably switch to in the next coming weeks to plums and damsons and apples nice. and pears. Have you done many kind of savoury combinations, like the cheeses, like Irish cheeses or anything? Yeah, Shane, Shane, Shane does the savoury damages. Um, yeah. Charlotte lets me do the savoury. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a real division of labour here. Um, we really do a uh, Gubine ham and cheese croissant. Oh my yeah. god. So we use Hingle Ferguson's Gubine cheese and his hot smoked ham. Wow. Um, with like a really strong um, Dijon mustard bechamel. Um, and they're like one of the most popular things on the market. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah. But then, you know, we talk about like courgettes being like, yeah. When I'm baking, I do a lot of like courgette cakes and courgette yeah. breads and stuff. I love that. Do you ever do that here? Um, at the moment, we just do pastries, um, like using croissant dough as the base. But the, like the, where myself and Shane see this going is as like a cafe bakery all everything done under one roof mm. um and we would 100 percent do an, a more extensive um cake offering 
because I'm, I'm a cake fiend. Like, I made banana bread yesterday and I ate half of it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so, yeah, nice. anytime there's cake, Shane is constantly like. What do you put on your banana bread? Do you put anything on it? Just hot butter? I put butter or creme fraiche or yogurt okay. or peanut butter. Mm, yeah, I was just going to say peanut butter. And what, what, whatever's yeah. going. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, you've answered our next question in terms of what's for the future. That's cool. Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. What's I this can't space? wait. And like it, so if people haven't found you before and they're listening going, my God, that sounds so delicious. Yeah. They can obviously come to Hot Sack. Do you sell the pastries as well? Or just no, the bread? just do the bread. <laughs> Need to talk pastries. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is a problem. I think yeah, I'll be giving you the runaround just as before. Yeah, uh, I'll really. Well, I'll, I'll start trying now. Then we might have it in a year and a half. Yeah. Um, well, we are like, we started the business all with our own money and we have we grown very organically and slowly yeah. and like we have had to say no to a lot of people like yeah. and it's partially for you know, our own work days already Headspace. very long mm. and it's partially because we need to save up money to get the bigger equipment mm-hmm. to upscale, mm-hmm. scale, scale yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> get there. Okay, okay, We're okay, getting okay. there. Um, Is he allowed still fun on scale? I'm Is surprised it took you that long to get it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my first fun? I think so. Oh, How did you seriously, 20 minutes. Uh, so, I think um, it started <laughs> when we were living in San Francisco and we were playing around with loads of different ideas Jeez, and ideas. Shane had a really, really cheesy one that, um, what was it, on, on scale Boulin, which is like the oh. loaf story. Oh. <laughs> Straight away, I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No way. <laughs> so we, I don't know how it took a lot. It took a long time, just constantly like. We just whipped that one. Yeah. Away. What about just trimming it? What about yeah. just, just trimming it? We just kept saying it. And we're like, oh, hang on, it works in so many different yeah. levels. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. Nice. Keep it. Yeah. Really nice. Oh, sorry. Your breads are in pop sack. Yeah. And then you in family as well. Families. Mm. Um, in proper order as well? Yeah, so Fumbly, they get, um, every, every week we do a market loaf. Uh, it interchanges every week. And Fumbly in proper order get our market loaves. Fumbly is Thursday and Fridays, and, and proper order is just Fridays. Um, and then the Fumbly also gets pastries uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, along with proper order. But the, the main place to come find us is at Penders Yard Farmers Market okay. on Manor Street. Mm. Um, oh. we start when did you, you start at that? When did you start in Pendle? So, was it November of last year? Okay, it yeah, was yeah. just before Christmas. Um, it's going to Guns up. And it's turned into like a fantastic market for us. We absolutely love it. I've never been there. I've heard great things. Um, there, yeah. It's um, a lot of locals come down um, right. and are like waiting at 10 o'clock for us. It's, it's just good. it's just really nice they, like, that they've included us into their Saturday morning routine. Yeah, um, that's actually a real treat, isn't so it? To be like, yeah. you're getting a hug from them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, bit, yeah. So uh, people get excited, don't they? They look forward to that part of their week. Right? Yeah, uh. they'll, they'll usually come down, um, get some bread, get some pastries, and maybe go buy the papers, get set up for the weekend. So yeah. um, is, that is a nice rhythm to your weekend. It really yeah. is a nice Scale rhythm. bread and a Saturday paper. Yeah. I feel um, like, are we going to be getting pastries before we go to electric picnic or something? I think we might have to. I think we have we might to, have to, to show it off in stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a treat! Yeah. yeah um, then hopefully, when the flea, the Dublin flea, gets back up and running, the people will be able to find us there um, cool. on the last Sunday of the month. Brilliant. We'll be there for the Christmas flea as well. Oh yes, Christmas yeah. flea. Hope. Yeah, I mean, it's coming soon. That'd be great. For, for Christmas prep already, we're like in the back wow. of our minds. We're like. Wow. Yeah, it's a mad Christmas stuff. I mean, like, it's a nice season. It's nice to you know, for people to kind of get a bit effervescent about it. And it's like, what's nice is the flea, it comes close to Christmas. Yeah. You know, people are actually shopping at Christmas time yeah, for Christmas yeah. things as opposed to, like, I mean, I'm so, what are we at the end of August? There's going to be Christmas shopping opening, like, this month. Yeah. So like, a, a Brand Tom's Christmas opening open in September. So, like, it's just, come on. Like, anyway, there you go. That's yeah. life. That's retail. Yay. <laughs> love Ginger it. coming soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, All we'll right. So, we'll let you go. Okay. There's so much. Yeah, you got a lot to do. Yeah. Thank, cool. thank you so much for including us in no. your day. And oh, no worries. Being here and being a part of it, the whole thing, it's just too exciting. It's true. Yeah. yeah thank it you. really is. Great. And thank you guys very much for watching. Um, as you know, you can find us on <laughs> iTunes and YouTube and Spotify now as well. And come and follow our stories on Instagram, um, where you'll hear more and more about what's coming up next. And uh, 
What's Shane posing for? Because he doesn't want to bang the. I don't bang the thing. Just grind up my credit card for you. If you have any questions oh. for these guys, or if you have flavors that you would like to see on their Ooh, list, oh yeah, yeah. that's a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. Have like, like a vote, like a vote for the best new flavor. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a really good idea. Then that's comment awesome. below here, yeah. or get in touch with us on Instagram. You'll find a picture of these guys. You can put a comment on there. And yeah, we'll see what happens. Deadly. Deadly. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching. Come on, Shane. Get in. Get in. Get in. There you go. <laughs> so, welcome back. Finn and Lydia here Hello. from Wandering Into Wellness. Um, I thought it would be interesting, since we were talking about protein powder and how that supports our muscles and helps us in our exercise. And that I would challenge Finn to a wall squat. Okay. What wall, wall squat off. off? So let's hope the wall squat off works because we have we got another new zest today. We have. We have had a new zest. So I it's like it's like new zest in this morning. modern day ready break. It is fuel for the muscles, and you guys can go to newzest.co.uk and you can use the code wellness15, which is our coupon code, a very special little coupon code. So you get 15% discount on all new zest products, which we are big fans of. We don't really support. Uh, any other kind of companies in this sort of way. We're not supported by any of the companies in this way, but we're really, really keen on News Us and We're just like nerdy big fans, really. Aren't we? We're big nerdy big fans. Yeah, there we <laughs> go. Yeah. We're going to spread the News Us word. So we are going to do a wall squat off and see who lasts the longest. I feel like I'm at a disadvantage because I've already talked two classes today and just done a big, massive Fantastic exercise cycle this morning. Workout. At like, I know we did like, a workout like seven million hours ago. But and anyway, cycle twice it's a today. Fair contest. It's a fair <laughs> contest. Let's go. So if I fail, I'm like doubly failing. This hurts. Yeah. Okay, so okay. we're going to so set the clock here. against the wall. Well, I mean, everyone will just see who fails. Really, <laughs> <then>. <laughs> Excuse my language. Backs, oh, backs against the wall. Okay. Slide down. So your bum needs to be parallel to your knees. There okay, we go. there nice. we go. So Finn, yeah. whilst we're in this wall squat, oh I God. think I would challenge you to finding some interesting things to say about the letters of Newzest. So tell us some facts about Newzest, beginning with N. N is for? N is for, hmm, N is for not the protein you'd imagined. Whey protein is the obvious one, but uh, this one is a European golden pea. U. U is for ugly, not us. We are all, <laughs> we're based on the beauty of... Uh, of vegan protein and ugly is is animal uh, agriculture that's intensive and types of rearing and this is not an ugly product this, this is, is a product really that is like right? clean inside and out. Uh, Z. Z is an evil one, eh? Uh, Z is for mm, all the zeal you can muster out of a day. New Zest has got like a squillion health ambassadors, top tennis players, top rugby players. Oh, Finn slipping. Um, <laughs> uh, he's got, they've got like all the New Zealand rugby team on it, like Mananu and all these sorts of amazing guys, and that is because it makes you perform. It's not because they're paid by it. They literally don't get paid anything by Newsus. No, that's super cool, isn't it? Mm. E. E is for goddamn ethics. Ethics. Ethics, ethics oh, in a God. company. So um, when Newsus approached Dr. Robert Verkirk of the Alliance for Natural Health uh, three years ago to produce a, 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 a multivitamin, he said, no, because you'll make me compromise on my ethics. You'll make me compromise on my standards. Mm. And so they said, uh, okay, well, what if we don't make you compromise? He said, like, okay, well, give it a shot. And so he gave it one shot, and they have a product called Good Green Stuff, which is what Robert Kirk says is the ultimate in terms of nutritional everyday needs for 99% of, of all the audience. Go on. S. S. S is for sweating. Uh, if you're a fan of sweating, then use this helps your muscles recover big time. So you've got leucine, arginine, valine, isoleucine, all the ones that are really key amino acids for growth hormone. T. T is for teetering on the brink of failure. <laughs> But yet, luckily, we took our news lesson, so we're just about... We're just going to make it through. Yay! Yay, we Let's did see, it. We, like, we haven't, we haven't failed yet. No. How much longer do you reckon you've got? I'm kind of, I'm reaching, we're shaking. I'm reaching, shaking as well. I'm yeah. like, where is it hurting most? Uh, quads. Yeah, but where are the quads? The front of them? The uh, middle of them? Yeah, it did. It was burning more than shaking, though. So bad. <sighs> um, so, we probably finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One of us so has to fail. Remember our, our code. Holy oh. moly. Remember our code. Wellness15. Wellness15. Use us on code at UK. Go! Best of luck! Ah! <laughs> I win! Yay! <laughs>